Hi everyone and welcome back. This is Sky coming on tonight to talk to you about the Mercury retrograde that we are currently in. I am really excited to talk to you and hopefully uh, bring on some calming and reassuring vibes to uh, work with some of the chaotic energy that I'm sure many of us are experiencing now. I hope you're all doing really well. We are doing live premieres every Friday. I hope that you are able to come to this one and if you're not, um, try to um, remember that we are doing them at 6 p.m. Pacific time, 8 p.m. Central, and 9 p.m. Eastern time every Friday. And um, they go on for quite a while, but they also, you know, time passes quickly when you're having fun. And before we know it, it's like the live premiere seasons have ended. So I hope you guys can check it out. Be sure to hit the subscribe button below and turn on the bell notifications so you can get notified when premieres start or when any other standalone videos go up. Um, yes, so thinking about what video to do this week, I knew it had to be this Mercury retrograde one because um, I've been getting so many messages and so many comments like, whoa, what's going on? This energy is so crazy. It's very hard um, moving into this transit, okay, to have a very clear and concise idea about the way that things are going to be. So basically, you know, a solid, stable, confirmed, guaranteed result is one of the only things that this transit is not promising. Okay, so I, when I'm feeling that, it makes me think that we have a little bit of a test on how much control we need or how many confirms, guarantees, or warranties we are demanding from life when that's one of the only things that life doesn't really give. The only guarantee that life gives is that there's not really going to be a guarantee or a warranty of anything, okay? Um, so... That is something that I think this Mercury retrograde is going to be um, pushing through, all right? Um, and this Mercury retrograde is happening from September 27th until October 18th. And of course, it will station and be in shadow probably until like October 25th or 26th. It's going to be the end of October before we really feel that we are back into um, a totally anchored and more clarity-focused place. But... Throughout this entire transit, I think it's really possible to kind of like building blocks, like one block at a time, uh, one mind block, one um, writer's block, one one block at a time, kind of building our way out of a previous chaos. Um, and as always with this video, I'm going to be just be talking about the intuitive messages of this Mercury retrograde, and then I'm going to do some charts up on the screen, and we'll talk about some of the other astrology and uh, what else, aside from it, is uh, sort of um, affecting this transit. As I've been meditating on the Mercury retrograde for uh, late 2021... I think it's the last Mercury retrograde of 2021. Um, there might be one towards the end of December. I haven't looked that far for uh, mapping Mercury, but... Um, this is going to basically show you a lot of alternatives. I'm feeling a big alternative focus with this Mercury retrograde, where it's like, okay, you've been focusing your energy this way, this way, and this way so intensely, so deeply, but do you know that it could actually totally be alternatively like this? Like none of this that you're currently, you know, injecting a million percent into really has to be the way that you prosper okay so what that's saying to me also is that there's an overworking at this time a workaholism perhaps and i definitely think that that has to start winding down a lot of the intuitive messages that i was getting in the october 2021 cycle of readings which are available on patreon check that out below what i was getting across the board for october was kind of like, you know when you have like a tornado siren or a siren that goes off and it holds its pitch for quite a while? And then as they start to deactivate, as they start to turn off, there's that sort of like, um, I guess, like decrescendo down and it's like a sort of winding down and it slowly echoes out. That's kind of the energy that I'm feeling with this Mercury retrograde. So I think it is going to deactivate a few things in our lives. And I think that that demands a sort of more optimized approach with what we really want to see continuing in our life. So there is a line of demarcation. I mean, this Mercury retrograde pulls us into Scorpio season, right? I mean, we're going to enter Scorpio season with a Mercury retrograde. So that which we are continuing to partake in, that which we have convinced ourselves is like part of our essence, does have a bit of a question here. And it also has a kind of like 
proposed update. That's that's something that's really coming up for this Mercury retrograde too. There's a proposition of update. Like it could actually start to be like this now. Like you could actually take something that might be a little bit old or a little bit outdated, old and outdated as really coming up to the front of the consciousness and how it could be renovated. So I'm seeing home renovations. I'm seeing... Um, Maybe even less physical things than that, like um, mindset renovations, budget renovations, um, philosoph philosophical renovations, okay? And also the way that we make decisions being renovated. Of course, uh, Mercury's in Libra, right? And that's what, what sign this retrograde is taking place in. So uh, that says that the way that we've balanced out, the way that we've gone about decision-making, strategizing, um, you know, choosing X or Y path, um, that is probably going to get a renovation during this time. And, you know, what can come with that also is like perceiving that we've made the wrong choice. That could come up for a lot of people during a Mercury retrograde in Libra, like wrong choice, you know, a choice made too fast, a choice made without the proper deliberation. So deliberation is a big keyword with this transit. And I would definitely recommend that everyone kind of anchor down during this transit to a degree if you can. If you can. I mean, not everyone can. A lot of people are really buzzing around. Um, I talked about in the 2021 year ahead forecast about how the air seasons this year, Aquarius, Gemini, and Libra were the most important because of Jupiter and Saturn being in Aquarius. Now, it's really important to know that um, during this Mercury retrograde, Jupiter and Saturn, right, are going to be moving to go direct, stationing and going direct. So by the time we come out of this transit, by the time it's over, so like um, by the end of Libra season, right, um, right before, so October 18th, um, you know, we are going to feel a huge relief, I think. We are going to feel a huge sense of comprehension of how we want things to look, but can the physical experience, can the actual um, heart of the situation begin to change or beat differently? That's gonna be the real question that this Mercury retrograde brings up. And I think that it's going to suspend or kind of like, there, I'm feeling like suspend disbelief or there's a suspension of the decision-making process as well, which might also be indicated with this transit. Maybe it's good now uh, during this transit to actually um, delay a few things. I've seen that a lot of uh, times actually around me where there's a bit of a delay or there's a bit of a, you know, waiting on certain seemingly imperative decisions and rather choosing to coast and I think that more of a downhill coast is going to feel a lot better for the rest of this year. It has been really monotonous for a lot of people, especially these last few months, like July through, yeah, July through September. I look back at that period of time, I look back at it, back at it collectively, energetically, and I look back at it even individually, and I'm like, that is not where we want to be, because what that period, that window of time, and I'm proud this is coming up as an intuitive message. This Mercury retrograde is actually trying to rewire us a little bit, I think, based on the previous few months. So looking back to July, I'm sorry, my computer made a weird noise that it's never made before. <laughs> Hello, Mercury retrograde. Um, looking back to July through September, um, I really like how the impetus that a lot of people have there. I really like the push, the want for a better life, the want for a more optimized situation. And I see that that really was the motivation for most people. The problem is the kind of haphazard way that it was done. It was almost like I want it yesterday. I want all these results right now. I want to create and forge such a shift in energy for myself that I would rather just do that and not think as much about what it really entails to shift like this. So this Mercury retrograde in Libra is probably going to um, start to show us what it really entailed. And also we can register it like right now. We can actually perceive very directly 
how we need to move forward, how we need to continue to solidify and secure our, I don't know, our lifeline to some degree, our bottom line, whether that's like financially, career-wise, or family, whatever. How we can actually secure those things, optimize them, and how we can time it, how we can time with Saturn, you know, preparing to go direct as well, how we can time a truly optimized shift and not just shift for the sake of shifting, change for the sake of change. Do we really know what that's inviting in? Do we really, are we really ready for the question mark of that? Which directs us direct, which sends us straight back to control, you know? Can we control an outcome? Can we say, okay, I want this to come of that by this means? Is it really that simple? Is that formulaic push really how we, I don't know, deliberately manifest or something? I don't think so. I think basically what I'm getting at here is I'm getting at a falsely manufactured bottom line for a lot of people. And the Mercury retrograde in Libra kind of nullifies some people's strategic edge, or it just makes them ADD or unable to really focus on the falsely manufactured or overly unnatural solution to a situation. So solutions might not be great during this time. Like people's proposed solutions might be a little bit off. But at the same time, from an individual perspective, as we're making decisions for ourselves, this might be a bit of a contradiction, but I'm being called to say it. We actually can really like write down on paper or figure out a truly direct evolution or solution to some degree. It is possible, but the key is that it has to really be coming from something longer term. Okay, so it's not about like just thinking, okay, all of a sudden I want a totally new lease on life. I want a totally different way of living and I'm going to get a grass is greener on the other side complex and I'm just going to like push through all of these new changes because that kind of leads us to still be there with ourselves as we go through that and we realize it's not really about these exterior circumstances. It's more about what I accept and what I don't, what I say yes to, what I say no to, you know, Libra scales, um, weighing the balance. The weighing of balance could be imbalanced with this Mercury retrograde. So basically, I think that the best thing um, intuitively during this slot of time, really until like the end of October, so the first decan of Scorpio season, as this Mercury retrograde will echo until that time, that deep inner catalyst pushing for some type of transmutation, transcendence, or decision made based on data collected or based on a long-term momentum of constant output generating of results, that catalyst, that push for transmutation, because that's what Libra Scorpio cusp is about. And Mercury will move across it as after it goes direct, and it's kind of like consciously being able to perceive what our longer term transcending cycle is looking like here in the beginning of it. So it's putting it into two halves. So like September 27th to like October 10th, I don't think you really need to push any type of, you know, huge overhaul or any type of huge decision process if it's not already happened naturally. But by October 10th through around October 30th, I would say even after Mercury has gone direct, um, what I'm thinking and feeling of this energy is that we really do need to think about how we can realistically be proud of what we have and what we've chosen and to not question it anymore and to, yes, allow changes, allow shifts as they're needed, but to make sure that those are correct, to make sure that those are what we think that we are and that what we think that they are and basically ensure that we are not pushing some kind of shift for shift's sake or falsely manufacturing a sense of transcendence or using constructs like money relationships or you know those exterior things to facilitate 
yeah, manufactured shifts, okay? They're, the universe is going to be very giving with these t- types of like true universal shifts um, after this year, you know, especially getting into January, February, March of 2022. It's very natural. And the the issue with this period of time is that I'm feeling it's super harsh to manufacture some type of shift at this point in time and then get to that point in time and be so burned out or so overwhelmed or so sick of pushing so hard that we're basically having to like sleep through a full true transcendence or we're having to kind of, um, you know, see what a true change really is like. That doesn't have anything to do with our own pushing or anything to do with our own manufacturing or anything like that, but something that truly is more universal. So basically what I'm saying is that it is coming and it is coming in a much better way, but this period of time intuitively to me feels more like a need for hard work, yes, a need for routine consistency and solid um, regimented output. That is an important part of this time, but also a time for kind of relaxing into what you've built. And I'm not sensing a lot of people really wanting to do that. I'm sensing a lot of people being like, okay, I built it. Okay, I've created this new experience, this new way of being. And now, because it's done and I don't have to like push my head up against a wall, I got to choose another wall and I got to find something that's not, you know, progressed enough in my life. And I got to start pushing on that now. And I think that there's a bigger call from the universe to relax into what you've built and to what you've created. And yes, as you hit that point, as you get into that place of being it, being okay with it, accepting what has been drawn by the current momentum, right as that gets okay, the universe is going to present to you what you've wanted anyway, and not just what you've wanted, but what is a true update or a true correct um, continuance of this energy. So um, on that note, everyone, I'm going to go ahead and get into the astrology portion of the video, and um, we will get another look on this. Okay, so on the day that Mercury went retrograde on September 27th, um, this is a few days before this video, but it's still good to kind of understand uh, the energy that we're working with. I basically find this chart to be too comprehensive in a way. Comprehensive is a great word. I love it. It's beautiful. Um, But I find it to be a bit front-facing and a bit so holistically focused that it can almost not be a great thing. And and I mean, we think of those words like comprehensive and holistic, and they are great words. I feel good whenever I say them. Um, but sometimes we also don't let our mind rest as well. When we're thinking about every single aspect of our life all day, every day, when we're thinking about um, the full picture of every single aspect, it's a great ability, but sometimes it has to rest. So that's the main thing that I'm seeing with the start at the onset of this Mercury retrograde is an overactive mind, um, uh, an overworking capacity, a tendency to overthink things, to um, not let the mind rest. So yeah, over caffeination, over overdone. Something's overdone. Um, just because the chart is so well distributed, I actually think um, every sign except for like Cancer is represented almost. Okay, and Virgo. So. Yeah, um, and this has kind of been a lot of what 2021 has been like. There's such a, there's a lack of like large stelliums, uh, except for, you know, inner planets that move through seasonally. And, you know, we got Jupiter and Saturn in Aquarius, but otherwise the outer planets are, uh, you know, all in that part of the wheel almost, except for Uranus, you know, Jupiter, Saturn, Neptune, Chiron, and Pluto, all in Capricorn, Aquarius, Pisces, Aries, all in that section. You know, so it's like, at a soul level, it seems like so many people are trying to just do these big things, these mature, aged, kind of senior things as a sort of generational push. Like, wow, I'm trying to meet, like, the peak of, like, what I've always been here for. And there's, like, this exhaustive, comprehensive push toward this, like, big thing for a lot of people. And it's exhausting. And I think that it's visible 
so much around us. I mean, can't you see that in the economy? Can't you see that in the way that, in like work ethic, in like the way that people are pushing and, and how maybe a lot of people have put like way too much onto their plate. Again, like 10 of wands, you know, nine and 10 of wands. I've said it a lot on this channel were the two cards that I was really seeing for the year of 2021. So it's kind of like people are trying to heal their previous trauma through proving to themselves that they can do all this stuff, that they can make it happen, that they can strive and have endurance and rise to an occasion. I think that that's really cool. I think that's really exceptional. Um, but the thing is, is that it almost loses specialty or it almost loses the actual poignancy of itself. Like through being so comprehensively focused, through being so thoughtful about many different areas, there it almost starts to lack talent in some ways okay do you guys this is actually very poignant this is really interesting because i've never gotten this intuitive message before but it's uh, this is what the astrology chart is showing me is that um we actually need to know what our deeper talents are we actually need to know like what our specialty is in order to actually evolve in the way that we are trying so hard to and this is the, that point in time where effort or trying is good but when it pushes to such a high level it actually starts to detract from what we actually want because we're not really showing up to any of our outputs with the talent needed to get what we want therefore there's a mediocrity that can emerge and I would I would look into this I think for businesses for economy for things like that because I think that you might start to see that everything that you're buying everything that's in your grocery cart is kind of mediocre like none of the food supply is really great like a lot of maybe the clothing bought is really expensive and very lacking in quality it's almost like everything is there in the stores hopefully <laughs> um but none of it is really that great and that's a great little allegory for the energy of this time like it's a full picture period of time. It's a holistic success. It's a well-rounded push. But all of it to a degree to me is filled with that debilitated Mars, with that debilitated Venus, with all of these retrogrades, moving station, um, Mercury retrograde, Jupiter, Saturn, Pluto, Neptune, Chiron, Uranus, retrograde, Jupiter and Saturn stationing. You know, it's very ineffective in a way it's very ineffective it's very stalled i'm sensing and it's just like going into a huge store a gigantic store and you know it's full of stuff it's got stuff everywhere but none of that stuff's what you really need so i would direct our attention to situations like that where there's so much meat so much content so much saturation but none of it's really what any of us want. <laughs> and that's going to create a really big collective shift, isn't it? When um, people kind of start to look for more quality things or people start to create. And that's really, I think, the answer to this is a very focused, honed creativity where we start to create what is actually wanted or we start to create things that actually have substance. So definitely watch out for building yourself up an identity or something or building yourself a business, building yourself a relationship that truly has no substance. Like it's got everything else. Like, I don't know, in a business, it's like got all the funding. It's got all of the cool flashy lights. It's got all of the cool, you know, trendy stuff, but there's not anything special about it like it's been modeled a million other times and it's totally saturated. And, you know, consumers coming through that are like already like, upset to even be looking at it in the first place and it's like so vapid um and then as for relationships as an example like you know trying to pursue a relationship with someone who's like got all of the character traits that you like all of the like looks that you like all of and they're like there for you and they're like messaging you and they're like um i don't know something seems like totally full picture about it or totally full package whether again this is like business or relationships or health or anything, but you feel as if something is missing, okay? Or you feel that because it's trying so hard or because it's so holistic that it upsets you, that people get frustrated by the 
by how good things are during this time too. And I would look at this from a different perspective also. And the relationship example really got me thinking about this differently already is like, also do people just want to be dissatisfied with what's in front of them? Like, yes, of course there are issues in the market. There are issues in culture right now. I think where people are being pretty fake um, and also what is sold or what is given or what is distributed is also really fake and um, not made with a lot of quality. However, also, are we really enjoying the process of being dissatisfied? Are we really enjoying the process of critiquing others? Are we really um, enjoying the process of like seeing what someone's like huge effort in their business created and just like looking down on it, you know? That's, an, that's another side of this, another potentially toxic side of this is being dissenting. You know, there's an enjoyment of that, I think, with this debilitated Mars, Venus, and Mercury retrograde. Another astrological message that I'm uh, seeing in this chart is the creation of certain confines and then uh, basically just to break out of them. So it's like people are proving things to themselves, right? Like the creation of anything just to overcome it. It's such a striving energy. It's such a push. And that's from that Sun-Mars conjunction, which we will also be having in at the end of October, moving into November in Scorpio. So that Sun-Mars conjunction just says, you know, we got to work hard right now, I think. I think that we got to really overcome something. And I think that um, specifically towards the ending part of this Mercury retrograde, October 10th and later, we need to really know what that is. We need to really know, and maybe between now and then, like between now and October 10th, depending on when you're watching this video, it's good to, to figure out what it is. And then by October 10th until the end of October, like overcome it. What is it? Overcome it. Because I think that there's got to be something like that. Even though I'm seeing that people are overcoming things they don't need to, I'm seeing that people are creating a lot of, kind of like the devil card in tarot, creating a lot of chains and a lot of confinements just to break them. But it's kind of cool also to have that ability, I guess. Maybe it's not an, a bad ability to have, but it also doesn't seem totally necessary. If you do have anything like that, though, if you do have anything that you're connected to or tied to that you don't want to be connected and tied to, I do think that it's good with a Sun-Mars conjunction always to prove to yourself how you can overcome or how you can, you know, resolve things. You know, a resolution will definitely be imminent in Scorpio season. Also, um, it's good to know that Mercury retrograde aside, as Jupiter and Saturn are moving direct, um, preparing to, stationing to go direct, I'll make a video about that, but <laughs> as th that might be next week's video. As they are, we are going to be getting glimpses of like what we want for the big stuff for the next 20 years of our lives. And that's already, we already know that really. I mean, those glimpses have already happened. I'm, I'm gonna change that. We're not just gonna get glimpses. We're gonna really know. We're gonna really know, um, especially as the rest of this year continues and those come closer together uh, and Saturn starts moving especially and Jupiter starts moving back towards Pisces, yes. We already kind of know what the big thing is, but can we commit to it? Are we? I think that we need to break the chains of um, what prevents us from truly moving towards what we want. And yes, is there a bit of a crooked path leading there? I don't think there has to be. I don't think there has to be. I think we can get a lot more clear on it, and I think that we can lighten up the path too the comprehensiveness of the current transits say that we can have an easier path, a more lighthearted path, and a more full package, whole picture path. As long as we maintain that little, that, that deeper talent, that, that smaller, more focused, kind of like a stellium energy talent that we have, so basically, we, what we have to know in order to get through this time without like um, any type of nervous breakdown or anything, because when it's so comprehensive like this, when it's so across the board as this chart is, you can really be pushed to a limit because there's only so much that one person can do. And I think a lot of people are pushing that limit here, especially with these Sun-Mars conjunctions. But if you can come through this time knowing what you can really offer and knowing what like a deeper talent is for you, and then you can also kind of be in all of these places that you've um, committed to 
there's going to be a great reward, I think, for it. But I do think we also have to really simplify the situation. But um, I also want to look quickly at the end of the Mercury retrograde as well to see uh, the sort of progression of the story. Okay, okay, yes, uh, this should be up on the screen now. And if you guys can see, like, you can go back and forth on YouTube and see, like, the previous chart and this chart, you'll kind of be able to tell how this is a much more compact, simplified experience by the end of this Mercury retrograde. So it's going to force some of our hands a little bit. Like, some of us are going to have to be like, okay, I'm throwing my hands up, this is too much, I have to reform, I have to redo, or I have to know that it's coming. Um, even, and, and what I'm being drawn to say intuitively is that maybe the the meat of the situation has not changed yet for a lot of people, and for some it has, for some it has, and, and I think for those of you who know that that needs to happen, you know what to do. But um, for some people it's going to be like, okay, well I'm having to do this now, but I already know. I already know the momentum of it, I already know where it's going. And something shrinks down, something narrows, something becomes more compact and more wieldy to some degree, which is good to see. It's really good to see. Um, what I will draw your attention to, this is important, <laughs> um, we have a weird little dance of Sun, Mars, and Chiron Moon, okay? And this is just going to be quickly on that day. I mean, even on like October 18th, the day that Mercury goes direct, you know, it's gonna show us what's not working, okay? And that's something I wanna really echo throughout this entire Mercury retrograde. It's gonna show what's not working, okay? It's gonna show a... I don't know, a tendency to be shopaholic, workaholic, anyholic, <laughs> anything like that is going to be very, very visible. And Scorpio season would bring that to a certain concentration that would not be pretty. So it's better to kind of, I don't know, have a mantra or some type of deep knowing during this time that I know what the limit is or I know what the, I know how much I can do and how much I can't do. Knowing one's limits would be the best quality at this point in time, and being able to stand up for them too, being able to stand up for one's limits. I don't think that many people are able to do that. I don't think many businesses are able to do that right now. I feel that it's very exhaustive, inflated, and really pushing certain limits, okay? So limitations, and by Capricorn season of this year, wow, limitations. Um, I don't know, but it's already more compact by the end of this Mercury retrograde because that's going to just like push people's mind like, whoa, way too much. I can't handle this. This is, I got to kind of break this down and be a little bit more regimented, be a little bit more soft on myself, be easier on myself. I'm seeing a lot of people like putting themselves through something they don't have to and like pushing themselves like in a bad way. So Venus is going to be in Sag though. That's going to really help out once Venus moves into Sagittarius. I may make a video about that. Um, we'll already feel a lot more comfortable in our experience. And then as Mercury goes direct here on October 18th, by October 18th, it's going to be a lot more comfortable and wieldy, the reality that we're in. But in order to get to that point, I think that we have to dress a few things down, minimalize a few things, and get real with what we know that we need to do and relax, relax into, I mean, look at that beautiful Jupiter and Saturn direct. Oh my gosh, wow. Incredible to see. We got to relax into what's working now in order to be able to, I don't know, be granted from the universe, the way that things are updating, the way that things are evolving, and also in order to want to do it, okay? So on that note, everyone, I'm just seeing if there's anything else I want to talk about for this week. No, I think I'm going to save a lot of download for the Jupiter Saturn Direct video that I will probably be doing either next week or the week after. And um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and wish you luck for an incredible Mercury retrograde. It's always, we got to remember, chaos is always a gift in a way so that we can know what we want to partake in and what we don't. Um, it's going to show us that. And we got to be happy and grateful that people are showing their true colors during this time, that we really know what we chose, and also that we have something, some type of talent that we've developed. Okay, this is a big key, big important key. There's some kind of talent that we've developed vicariously through the last five or six years that doesn't have much to do with what we've actually done, 
but it's there. And now that can start to be a focus. And that's a little hint for you guys about how as we're relaxing, as we're getting more tranquil, as we're loving what we've created, there's a little hint there for how you can segue or bridge into the um, update that you already kind of know that you're not just wanting, but um, transcending into. Okay, so anyway, everyone, thank you so much. I'm going to go ahead and link the Patreon page for this channel down below if you've wanted to support an independent creative YouTuber. Um, you can check that out and get a bunch of bonus content. I just love the Patreon service. I do weekly forecasts every week on Saturday. I do... Um, General readings, early and ad-free. The October ones are already up over there. Um, so go and check that out. And also, you can hit the like button to get this video out there. That's a great free way to support. Uh, commenting, sharing the video, subscribing. I really appreciate anything like that. We also are on Discord. The Discord community is great. It'll all be linked below in the description box. Have a wonderful Mercury Retrograde. And I can tell you by the time we get through this Mercury Retrograde, if we like we can feel really happy, okay? We can feel really happy and blessed to be on such a path. So anyway, thank you so much, everyone. Have a great time of it. Talk to you soon. Come check out live premieres every Friday, 6 p.m. Pacific time. Talk to you soon. Bye.